Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We have not reached an agreement with the Board of Education. CPS refuses to budge on our contract proposals that will have no cost impact on the district. Initially, we thought we might be close to a deal, but today we have found out that their bargaining rhetoric is as empty as their bank accounts. What we're asking for speaks to the very heart of our profession, which is being able to provide high quality education for our district's 600,000 students. And instead of making a deal with us, they've made threats. Threats to terminate 3,000 educators, threats to increase our class sizes, threats to eliminate our pension pickup, and threats to enforce $200 million worth of cuts. We're kind of sick and tired of these punitive policies and directives from CPS. We are professional educators who, in the last contract, were asked to work 20% longer with 20% fewer resources. We understand CPS is broke on purpose, and with that being said, we have said that we are looking at how we were at a negative 7% with the pension pickup cut, plus there were no lanes and steps, so that may be another 3 to 4% depending upon other people's paychecks. And then they finally came to us and said, well, 0% raise, but you can keep your lanes and steps. And we were willing to work with that, forego another year of a raise. Now, mind you, CPS has only had no raises for four years out of the last, what? Since the 1960s. Since the 60s, okay? But now it's going to be next year, and we just went through that when they stole our raises without negotiating with us back in 2011. So we ask for things like reduce our workload, the excessive paperwork is out of control, or get more resources for our students. We ask for the ability to grade our students properly and an end to countless unnecessary testing. Now, we are clear that more counselors, nurses, social workers, and other clinicians cost money. We understand that. But we want the cuts to special ed to end. CPS refuses to discuss progressive revenue options that are available to provide long-term solutions to their self-created fiscal crisis. Why? If they are cash-strapped, then why won't they look into these options as well? So for now, we are still willing to come back to the bargaining table, and our talks could continue, but as of right now, talks have broken on. Our contract expires Tuesday, and if no agreement is in place, we will remain under our old contract. Questions, please? possibility of another strike? Is that looming there, Karen, at all? Well, I mean, nothing's off the table. Where are our talks right now? When's the last time? They're off. We just, we just yeah. tried to get something done. We thought we could get something done today. Are you close? Are you, is it no, really that far? We're I mean, done. Really that far? We're right. done for today. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, simple things like we want to have control over grading. Grading. You know, I mean, that's something that we've had, but for the last two years, they've imposed grading policies that aren't always uh, applicable to our students, but they are a one-size-fits-all mechanism. So we'd like to have autonomy in grading. We'd like to have that back. It's pretty simple. We asked for that. They said no. That cost them not a penny. <coughs> Karen, in the 0% the offer, what was the pension pickup offer? It was, it was returned to 7%. They were going to pick up the pension. Karen, on the editorial day, uh, the governor mentioned a potential compromise about 
um, having the rest of the state pay, pay teacher, contribute to Chicago teacher pensions in exchange for an elimination of the block grant? Is that something that has been at all discussed? <coughs> has the administration talked to you about their dealings with the governor? No. That, none at all? No. But what have the conversations been like about class sizes? They can't afford to change class sizes. Class size changes cost money. I forget, Arnie Duncan used to always say there was, was. do you remember what it was? He would say, uh, for every one child you take out of a class, lower class size by one child, it costs the district like $10 million or something. Do you remember? I forget, but the issue is more going in the other direction. Right, exactly. What's the sticking point then? What's the hold up? What, what was the straw that broke the camel's back today? The straw that broke the camel's back for our members was that they could not give on the non-economic issues, grading, testing, and, and some paperwork, you know, an evaluation piece. So. What was the evaluation piece? Um, we were asking for some changes in the cut scores. Can you elaborate as to what their rationale was beyond for not budging on some of these non-economic proposals that you made? Yeah, they gave some, they, basically they said these are hard principles that we have that we're not going against. And I think the exact term was, you know, we won't compromise. Well, mm -hmm. we won't compromise isn't a very good negotiating position, is it? Can you elaborate about the grading policies that have been imposed the last few years? What are you referring to? Oh yeah, there have been policies that have come down that have basically said uh, you must put X amount of grades in for each subject every week. You know, and it was some arbitrary number, like for uh, or this is how we you will weight your work. You know, like one of the things they said that homework was worth 5% and class partici participation worth 20%, something like that. They had all these different things about, and you know, my attitude about that is if I had that grading scale, a lot of my students would fail. All right? I purposely push my homework up to 25%, you know, so that kids that don't test well or kids that miss a lab or something don't suffer. So I needed some sort of, I would need autonomy around that. And if, if they're setting the grading scales and grading policies, you know, and, and, and for some standardized reason, like, it, well, if a kid is at X school and they go to Y school, you know, they should expect that the grades have meaning, you know, that, but I've heard of lots of different grading policies. Homework is 5% here right. and 20% there. So right. you're saying they were imposing this, trying to impose this on all the schools? Because I don't see that happening in the schools. Well, it might have been within schools, you know, so, but people want to be able to, to have some autonomy over their grading. And that wasn't happening. You know, we even said, could we at least put it to, to a faculty vote? You know, or something. You know, something to be more democratic about the about the policy. But they said no. Would it have been difficult to implement some of these changes though in a relatively short time frame of an agreement? For a one-year agreement, it would have would have been tough to do this. Right? Yeah, it's just a year. You know, so that's why we said let's let's do it. You know, but the the real issue though becomes it's a good question, why? You know, and I'm not gonna you know poo poo it. However. What I will say is that since this is only a year, what could it hurt? Especially since we had autonomy over our grading a couple of years ago. So we know what it's like to have it taken away. Um, Ms. Karen, so are the 3,000 potential cuts that they're suggesting separate from the 200 million in cuts they're suggesting? Or is that the same thing? The 3,000 would come would come out of that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's on top of that. It's on top of it? On top of that. I think it's on top of it. Karen, can you once again break down how we reached this point where you're throwing this press conference? What happened in that, in those talks that just broke everything down? Is that we just, they won't compromise? It's always about, well, what about this? What about that? What about this? No, no, no. 
could just could or we'll kick it to a task force with no teeth to it. You know, we've had that happen. So we're a little, you know, once burnt, twice shy. Karen, what was the, your count uh, on the economics? What was your counter to the zero percent increase? Was it three? Was it less? We didn't. We didn't even. We didn't even go there. We didn't say give us a raise. We we're very clear that they have a serious fiscal issue. We're understanding of that. We're willing to work within that. So, if we are willing to get from negative seven plus, because it was more like negative ten, to zero, that's that's movement, right? So your proposal was continue the seven percent pickup, but zero annual increase. Was that the compromise you saw today that they didn't meet this, you on? Yes, basically. In terms of finance, we didn't even deal with finances today because we, we sort of, we sort of have already dealt with that. So what we were dealing with is these things that would make that zero percent feel better. Okay, but the, the, the economically, it was maintain the seven percent pickup. That's all. Like no annual increase. Maintain the old structure of stuff that way. Right. So we're, we were, in other words, we were willing to consider no general increase. If the board could do something to guarantee conditions could get better in the schools for our members and for the students we serve. And, and I'm talking about things that don't necessarily cost money, like reduce some of the excessive testing. Uh, like, like give teachers back some autonomy and grading. It makes us crazy to have mandates that say, okay, you have to enter 300 grades a week into, in, into a computer. Do something on paperwork and make that enforceable. A series of things that we that we will be we understand. We're not asking for a big raise. In fact, we're not asking for. We'd be willing to we'd be willing to consider no general increase, right? But only if that's tied to things that actually make the schools better. Um, and frankly, the other thing we ask for is that they not eviscerate the schools with mass layoffs um, if the budget stuff doesn't work out. I mean, you know, they're, they they have their set of fiscal priorities which have kept the district starved for funds for years. And what's going to what's gonna wind up happening is it's going to be the students that pay for that if, if they have to lay off 3,000 people and we go to 45 in a class. Um, and, and we said, you know, give us some guarantees that you're not going down that road. And in the end, um, the, the talks broke down over things like that. So just to be clear, because when, when we ask them, they may not see it as a zero increase. And so I just wanted to be clear about what was the zero increase in your definition of it. It, it maintained the 7% pension pickup. And, and maintained lanes and steps. Lanes and steps and had no annual? That's correct. Cola? That's correct. Did it have a cola? No. No, no, no cola no. and no annual. No. Okay. Jess, I thought you all had asked for a 3% increase. That was part of the last contract that said that they wanted an extension this year that would have a 3% increase. That was their part of the old contract that expires Tuesday. And is there agreement between both CTU and CBS on a one-year deal? No. no. That's why we're here. But I mean, just the, not the all the details, but that it would only be for the duration. Yeah, they said they'd be willing to do a one-year deal. Mm -hmm. um, um, to give us some breathing room. Br breathing room, right. And, and that's something that we had actually proposed. You know, I mean, we think that, that with as much uncertainty as there is, it's not the right time to, you know, lock in something for five years. We don't even, we don't know what the financial picture is going to look like. We thought short term would be the best way to go for that. And Jesse, um, given that, oh, go ahead. Hmm? Well, given that uncertainty, I mean, does this maneuver here today add to the uncertainty that could come next week when state legislators are taking up another vote on delaying the pension plan? Well, I mean, the uncertainty comes from the fact that right now, um, the CPS is broke on purpose. There is not progressive. There, there, there's not progressive revenue solutions. The revenue solutions we've heard are regressive. Go after the poorest people first. Um, our union has consistently said, ask the wealthiest people in our society to help pay for high quality public schools. Um, that's where the uncertainty and the question marks come from about whether or not they can even afford to run the school system. Um, we do want to say that we will do our part, but only if they recognize that teachers need some autonomy to do what's right in the classroom. And they have to, like, the things that they can make compromises on that don't cost money, they should be willing to compromise on. Um, that's where the uncertainty is coming from.